<laughs> okay, I'll just repeat this quickly. We're looking at the stochastic orienteering problem. We're given a set of vertices, or we'll call them jobs, and a metric on the space of distances between any pair of vertices that satisfies the triangle inequality and its metric. Um, the sizes are random variables sampled from a given distribution, so the size of each job, and we have a deterministic reward for each of these jobs. We want to find a path starting at the vertex row. Um, and then we will, so we're looking at the non-adaptive setting, we'll just follow this path and keep processing the jobs we reach until we reach the budget B. If we're in the middle of processing some jobs, we don't get the reward for that job. Just stop. Okay. And today we're looking at a constant factor approximation for this. Okay. So the general approach. For solving such a stochastic problem. And for solving, I mean, it's in the loop sense because the option one is no constant factor. So, our stochastic problem, call this P. Okay, so we can't really solve the stochastic problem. So, we find some deterministic problem. So you can't see the right right side. Like I, I can't see the deterministic word. I think some of okay. Yeah, I know it's a bit difficult to see the whole world. So David, I mean, how long should we have your own? Yes, but um, we have tried that. And we can we have no control over the background of the owl. The owl how it reports it starts recording the audience and so on. Okay. okay. We want our deterministic problem Q. Um, and a map at, from instances of our stochastic problem to instances of deterministic problem, um, where we have the following. So we want to be able to, uh, we can solve the sum reasonable definition of solve Q efficiently. So the second thing is that for all instances of our stochastic problem, we want that the optimal value of the deterministic problem, so for Q, um, so we've mapped the instance to problem of Q. We want this to be some constant factor of the expected value of the stochastic problem. Okay. And then finally, so given a solution, um, X star to our deterministic problem, uh, we want to obtain a non adaptive policy. With expected value, at least some constant factor of the value of X star. So we just say this is our half X star. Okay. So suppose we had this for our problem, right? We would take our stochastic instance map it to an instance of this deterministic problem, we would solve it efficiently, maybe solve it with some constant factor. And we would know that we would also have, we would have some control over the optimal value. We would be close to the optimal expected value of our stochastic instance, right? And then we take this solution and then map it to an adaptive policy. And we would know that we would get um, a constant factor of the original expected value. Okay. So our first example of this would be the stochastic knapsack problem. Right, so this is our stochastic problem in this case. And our deterministic problem is just the regular knapsack. 
right? So an instance of the knapsack problem, uh, we have our jobs or elements. Um, for each, we have that probability distribution for the sizes. We can determine the reward and a budget. And the map, we would take our instance of the stochastic knapsack and obtain an instance of knapsack with deterministic values. So usually I'll open up the deterministic values in my hat. And how do we choose these deterministic values? We looked at this before. But what's the idea here? So if you have some element, you can once if it instantiates to some size that's bigger than the budget, it doesn't matter how much larger than the budget it was, right? We don't care if it's so what we do is we truncate the expected size at the budget. And then similarly, we shouldn't be able to get the reward from any job if it instantiates the larger than the budget. Because these were ones we picked. Okay. Um, and then for this problem, you would get a constant vector approximation just with this approach. Okay. So you mean I have these odd week time steps? Yes. Sorry. Thanks. So now let's look at the problem we care about. Stochastic Orient. Okay. So again, some instance here, um, you know, vertices. So in this case, we just found a deterministic problem by setting the one random variable to deterministic. So we can try the same. And that would give us, say, the, the deterministic problem would be just the regular orient here. OK. So we would map our instance of stochastic orienteering to an instance of orienteering with this input space. Okay. Um, so these are deterministic now. This is fine for orienteering. So orienteering, right, you're just given some graph and all the vertices have values and you want to pick the um, path starting at row of length at most your budget that has max reward. So even though we have sizes on our vertices, this is fine because we can always just put those onto the distances in our graphs, right? You can look at the vertex, look at all of the incoming arcs, and then add the processing time of the vertex to all of those arcs. Okay, so what's kind of the analogous choice? Um, so previously we could only put an element in our knapsack if it instantiates the size at most of the budget. In this case we would need to both travel to the vertex and process it, right? So the process time can be at most the remaining budget of the minimum amount of time it would take to reach it. So can do this. Take the budget and the minimum amount of time it would take to reach it is just if you travel directly from row. And then we do the same analogous choice, right? Okay. Um, but this doesn't work well. So this could give you, the issue is um, with this step here, you can't guarantee that when you map it to a deterministic problem in this form, that you would still be able to obtain a high objective value. A high expected reward. 
Um, basically, the issue, like the intuition, the issue is that there's a trade off between um, the travel time. So your budget is split between the travel budget and the process budget, right? And so a, an optimal solution might have different amounts spent on each, in which case then your truncation kind of is ineffective depending on what choice you make. So this is not the right problem. You are telling me <clears throat> that like I am not considering the fat as a whole, right? I'm just that, that's like that throws too much stuff away. Yeah, buy. because the way you're truncating it, like you're saying, I could spend all of my budget on just like I only have to travel to this one vertex, and then I can spend the rest of the budget on just processing that vertex. But it might be that you actually shouldn't have. In some solution, you might have traveled a lot more and only spent a small amount of time on processing jobs, take small jobs, and then this just doesn't work out well. There is an example in the paper. I don't find it super yeah, helpful, to be honest, but it is there. Okay. Okay. Um, So then the actual determinist of problem we want is something called uh, knapsack orient. Orienteering. Um, okay, so an instance of this. So here, silver vertex set and distances. Um, so this is the determinist of problem. So we're given deterministic sizes and reward. Starting vertex, and now the budget is split. So we're going to guess how much of the budget we should spend on traveling and how much we should spend on processing. So L and W, right? And then the goal here is to compute um, a path Sigma from rho such that. So, what do we need? We need that the length of the path is at most L, um, the size of the jobs on the path is at most W, um, and we want to maximize the reward. Any questions about this determinant problem? Okay. Um, but now this gives us a bunch of problems, right? So um, depending on what points we make for W. So this is the map we'll use. And we'll change this kind of approach a little bit. So our map F now takes as input um, an instance of stochastic orienteering, as well as some um, guess for how much of the budget we should spend on uh, processing jobs. And we get an instance of knapsack orient. Okay, and then so the specific way they define this is they they set the variables as follows. So we'll assume the input is just looks like this. Um, so Okay, 
So what's the natural choice? We should set L to be the leftover budget. And of course, we're going to assume that the budget we get is at most, for processing is at most the total budget. Um, and then the choices for the deterministic size of awards is a little bit different. So what they do is they say, they cap it at um, W over two. And the reward is also a little bit different. So we get back the original reward. If the probability that the size was at most W over two is at least one half. And otherwise it's zero. Okay. So this is how we will construct some solutions. So now how does this change? Um, we still want to be able to compute this problem efficiently. Now for all instances, what do we want? Um, we want some choice of W to give uh, that the instance we obtain of the deterministic problem gives us a good result, right? So the optimal value of F the W. And what we'll show is that we only have to check polynomially many. Um, we only have to guess polynomially many choices for W, and then we just look at the best one, and we'll show that the best one has to that's what it is. Okay. So this is our plan. Any questions? So the first one gets a constant factor? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so there's the three different things we need to check. One, I will just tell you, because it's not as interesting. Um, we do indeed have a constant factor approximation for this problem. Um, yeah, so we'll say there's a constant factor. And they do present this in the paper as well. Basically, they uh, take the, they have these two different sets of constraints. If they had one of them, they'd know how to solve their problem with, um, with the constant factor approximation. They put just the knapsack constraints into the objective with the function. Okay. So then we'll look at number three. Okay, so my claim is that, um, so I give you a path, sigma, um, to the solution to um, deterministic problem. Then we can obtain non adaptive policy with expected value. Um, We get an expected value constant factor of the value of this um, path in our deterministic problem. Okay, so we've solved it. We want to convert this to a non adaptive policy. Okay. So the process to do this is we sample each vertex. 
with probability one over four. So I mean, if all of this is true, would that give given like a constant factor adaptivity gap? Adaptivity? No, I'm just looking at no, no, no. non-adaptive. Yeah. Oh, so when you say IP, it's just the when you say opt of uh, yeah, so right. just looking at the non-adaptive. I'm um, yeah, opt is just with respect to the non-adaptive. That's non-adaptive. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Sample each perfect with probability um, four, and then the non-adaptive policy is just to um, process those dogs that were selected according to the order and the path given. Okay. And we'll show that our claim is that for all vertices um, with positive value, those are the only ones we care about, then uh, V is completed with probability at least 1 over 16. So what does it mean if a job is completed, it's selected, it's reached, and it's processed completely? So it's selected probability one over four, right? Um, a good scenario. <laughs> that was very much like an attention group. <laughs> A good scenario would be if it instantiates suicide at most W over two. And if the if we look at all of the jobs previous in the path, um, their sizes were most W over two as well, right? Because then we have we know that um, our budget for processing still has for this job. Okay. So first, I mean, the way we defined the reward of this job, um, we know that this is true with probability at least one half. Right? You said if it was larger, it were, it's, it's at most W over two with probably at least one half, then the value is positive. So this is probability at least one half. Okay, and then so here, sorry, um, should explain this. This is the random variable just telling us whether this job was selected or not when we sample it. Okay, so first, what is the expected value if we ignore this sampling? If we chose all of the vertices in the minimum, you want SU instead of SB? Yes, thank you. Yeah. If we chose all of them, this is exactly how we define though our sizes. So we know that this is at most W because we started with some feasible solution, some feasible path in our distribution problem. And we said that our budget for the sizes was W. Okay, so then let me just say that this is star here. Then the expected value of this is at most W over four. Right? So then just mark up the inequality says with probability at least a half, it's at most W over two. So this probably at least a half. We combine this and we get one over 16. Any questions about this? Just a general idea. You you define your, you, you fix how much you're going to spend on uh, processing, how much you're going to spend traveling, and then you solve the deterministic problem that you created. Yeah. It's going to give you like a path. Yeah. You go in that sequence and then you sample with one more probability. And that's how you like to keep 
Okay, and that's where the analysis comes from. Right. Okay. There is still so far. In a sense, your conclusion depends a lot on the first W chosen, right? Yeah, like that's why it, it might perform poorly. So I mean that's the next step we're proving, right? For certain choices of W, it might be really bad. Like if you have a really large job that has high value, then you should allow for a large budget for processing. Like that. Yeah. yeah. You're just scratching. Okay. Don't worry, Kat. Just just mess you. Um, that there must be some choice of W we can make. It's not just policy, it's just some ordering of the verse that started in a row. And then you just compare that they are taking visible and non visible. So you don't have, you don't put the reward, you just keep putting them by pushing the reward. I'm collecting reward. I visit each vertex in succession. I can collect the award reward if I can process it within the budget. And then I move on to the next vertex. No, the reward is deterministic in each of these problems. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, After you pick up that, this is the analogy plane aspect, right? Sorry. After I. Well, on the non active policy, when you fix the package, it sure. comes just the next time because the right word. Sure, but I mean, it will it will depend on what order you're. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, right, because the distances might be different if you chose to trade, even if you fix your set of vertices. So it's still a little bit different. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're done with this. I don't know how to manage points. Okay, so now this is their structure theorem. So I give you some instance of stochastic orient cherry, um, and then an optimal solution. Again, this is just like the, the non-adaptive setting. Okay. So then either Or there is some choice we could make for our budget for processing. This form um, for I is an integer, or I mean, maybe the budget is zero. Um, such that the optimal value of choice. Here now, the deterministic problem is defined this way. It means a constant factor of the non-adaptive policy. Okay, so then what would our algorithm be? We wouldn't know which case it is, but so then with probability one half, we just take the best single vertex, which we can compute. That's not hard. Um, otherwise, we check all of the log b values we could pick of w we check which of these deterministic problems gives us the highest reward and then we just convert it by the process we did here losing a, a factor of 16 and get a constant factor okay so this is what we want to prove um and so in the 
adaptive setting, they have a very similar structure term, but instead you lose some kind of log log B factor here. Okay, so our first observation. So we'll assume now going forward that this is not true. Like just that there is no single vertex tour with constant factor expected value. Okay, so then with that assumption, uh, we can draw all kind of large jobs, all be um, such that um, with high probability, you couldn't cross it in. Um, and so, So why is this the case? I mean, it's um, the size it instantiates to is likely reaching the budget, right? Because you the vector number, right? This the few times that I'll pick this on the board. Oh, sorry. Yes. Thank okay, you. now could you go back to what you're explaining me? Yes. Thanks, though. No, that's not how. <laughs> um, with high probability, I mean, it's reaching the budget just by processing that single job, right? So you likely couldn't process many of these jobs at all. And you know that none of them have very high, that high value, right? So if you get rid of them, it's not a big deal. Why did I erase that? I hope you all remember the approach. I know. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> we have this lemma. So if you're given R, W, P prime, um, and we're assuming star is not true. Oh, sorry, I can't write it that way. Actually, this isn't given. So, and there does not exist a single vertex where. Um, with expected reward R over K prime. And then you're also given a path starting at row. With total distance between the vertices must be minus w. Um, and you need this path to satisfy that the value is at least r. And if we truncate so for r is at most j, so we're just looking at the truncated um, expected size for each of these jobs. Okay, then um, that instance we can construct Um, has this. It's 
and then we'll go through. Basically, I start with some, say we have some path. It, it's not an ordering of all of the vertices, it's just simply bj. Um, the length is at most b minus w, which in this case we know is equal to L. Then if the value is sufficiently high and the length, it could exceed w, but it doesn't exceed too, too much. Then we can find some solution to our knapsack orient problem with uh, some of the vector okay. okay. So what's the basic idea here? We split our jobs into two sets. So first, the large jobs is the set of all jobs such that the probability that SB is at least W over two is at least one, right? And then the small jobs are just the others. Okay. Um, so first we can say, right, so the value of the whole set, of course, is just equal to the value of each of these sets. Um, so one of them has to have at least half the value. And we can say that actually it can't be this set, basically because they're sufficiently large. And since we tossed out all of the very large um, jobs, it would have been the case that one of these would have to be a single vertex tour with this value, right? Because we had limited kind of how long each of them could be. That's basically it. So we know that the reward um, of the small jobs we have at least half. Okay, um, and then basically what you're doing is that you're, you have your path time and then just split it into k prime paths, each with um, your expected processing time of each path. So sigma one, of the sigma k prime, sigma i is at most w. Two k prime. No, right? Because I've, I've previously it was k prime times w. Yeah. So then I can split it up into a bunch of paths that are shorter. Yeah. And then get that each of them is at most w. Right, but you have a. Um... What is it called? The impacting problem. I mean, yeah, you might have to do slightly more than k prime, but it's a constant time k prime. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we're pretending it's k prime, and then one of them has to have value, the average value, right? Which is r over k prime. Well, one of them has yeah, one half of r. So we're done. We found right. <laughs> <That's his like. laughs> right, so we split. We we showed that we could just look at the small. Okay, the one other thing. Um, remember, all the small jobs have R V. That's right. So then we're looking at the value in our deterministic problem. It's the same. So the value of the small jobs is equal in each of these problems. And I've given you that there's some path which attains value at least R of the prime. Could you explain again the splitting? Right, I, well, okay. So remember how we defined um, the rewards for all of our jobs? We said that they got reward zero if they were too large, yeah. which is exactly these jobs. Okay. So we want those to take very little of the total reward, which is R. 
which happens to be true because they're large and we tossed out all of the large jobs. And so if they were small and had high value, then they would have had to be single vertex board attaining this expected value. Right, so we're saying like the large jobs can't have that high value. And that's why we could kind of lose the constant factor, factor two, and only look at the small jobs. Yeah, I'm confused about like how you're getting like all the kids like that. Right, so I'm just looking at them in order and then stopping once I reach, I, I look at the process, the amount of processing time for each. And I just stop. Okay, you reach W, okay, start a new path. And I only have to do this like a constant time for K. Yeah. Um, okay. So then when is this, what do we want to show? Finally, um, we want to show that we can find such a path for these choices of R, W, and K prime. So we want that R is the optimal value of our stochastic instance. We want K prime to be some constant. And we want that W is of a nice form, right? Because we don't want to have to check all possible choices of W. We want to just check the one zero. Okay. Okay, so we want this to be true for any instance. So we have our instance. Um, and suppose we have our optimal uh, non adaptive policy, right? Which is some ordering of the word starting at row. And we order all of them. Okay. And the current value of this, the expected value is on. Actually, it's not like that. Okay. So for each vertex BJ, we define the minimum amount of time it would take to reach that vertex. So CJ is just the sum of the distances until that vertex. Right? So, in order to successfully process this job, you would certainly need the budget to be at least. Um, Right, so the remaining budget is at most this once you reach VJ, right? That's assuming that all of the sizes of the jobs are zero. Okay. Okay. So we fix some constant. Okay. And we let VJ star um, be the first job such as the following. We look at the previous jobs.
So basically it's the job where um, the previous jobs on the path were essentially like sufficiently large and it becomes much less likely that we can indeed process this job and attain its um, value. So I think I have five minutes left. So I might just state this lemma. So the probability that ought to this index big star or higher is at most some small probability, right? So if you pick um, a sufficiently large kind of constant value of K, they suggest 10, then you could just cut off your solution at the, just cut off your um, optimal path here at like J star minus one. And then you'd say, okay, I still have a constant factor of the value if I only look at the, that, that subset of jobs. We can, if we have time after, we can go through that group, but there's only a few minutes left. It would take 10 more minutes. No, I think things okay. should end <laughs> as the time <laughs> they are set. I'm not a believer in this hour and a half. Um, you have one hour for yourself. You started late. Uh, yeah, but I like, I like on time, you know? Because then if someone has to leave, they'll be like, I didn't see the result, you know? Okay. Okay, we're concatenating our paths. I'm just going to be right here what we want. We want. The value of the path is at least r. Um, we want k prime to the constant and w. And once again, I shouldn't have erased that I just traced, but it's all. Okay, so we have that optimal non adaptive policy sigma star. Um, so let phi star be um, the path obtained by um, truncating sigma star at j star minus one. Okay. So by this lemma, basically we're saying that the value of this truncated path is still a constant factor of off. Okay, so that's good. Um, what about the length? So, okay, we picked J so that it was the first time this was the case, right? So for the previous jobs, we have this. Um, this is listening to strictly and now just taking this is strict and now we need to just add the j 
star minus one. Okay. We know that this part is at most k times b minus dj star minus one. And then we get one more here. Okay. So we have k, k plus one total. Um, and then all we're doing is just picking some value in between. So notice that there's some choice we can make for L here. Or we can bookend. Okay. And then we're just going to set the star is equal to B over to B. And then we have found the path we want. Right. So then we know that if we had chosen this um, budget for processing the jobs, then we would know that the corresponding um, NAPS uh, orient deterministic problem had a constant factor reward compared to the stochastic problem. Any questions? Kind of the end, one. Yes, thank you, Does anybody have any questions? What is the final constant that you got? Do they make it explicit? They, they don't really bother because there's so many lots of factors along the way. Okay. Yeah, they don't they don't optimize either, right? Because at one point, we're like, look at this lemma. They just say, okay, take case that. They don't say why or how it works. They're just like, Pick some of them. Yeah. Like around 200 or something. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions, thoughts? Can you talk a bit about you know, where does the upper bound and the other big up come from? Upper. So you say that. I mean, okay, so I mean, in the adaptive setting, right, um, you can use the exact same algorithm that, that gives you a non adaptive solution. Mm -hmm. And you can argue that this is within some log log B factor of the optimal expected value of the adaptive, adaptive setting. So using the same algorithm. And that part is kind of weird because usually when you're arguing about adaptive, problems, you're looking at some LP and you're solving it and then rounding it, right? But in this case, the LP relaxation is not known to be very strong. So they have like a tricky stochastic, what is it? Stochastic processes, Martin Gale's argument for why it's correct and close, but I don't have all of the intuition for that argument. Okay. Yes. Could you talk a little bit more about uh, the, the choice of like the J star and like how it plays a little bit to the level? But I'm not sure I, I understood like what is going on with this condition, like this, the sum of the expectation. Fair enough. I don't find it super intuitive either. <laughs> um, I, I can't I can't really say that much is helpful. I mean, like I think that it's like, okay, you have already chosen enough jobs that would take up a fair bit of the remain the amount you would need in order to process this job B J. Uh, the way you subtract the J, you're almost doing the last one, right? And yeah. Okay. So like ignore the truncation for a second. So like ignore the, the minimum is B I B minus B J and assume that it's just S B I. Yeah, sure. Um <clears throat> So that inequality will tell you that the expected value of the sizes of the jobs that come before J is, is at least K times uh, B minus DJ. Uh, okay. And 
so if you're interested in knowing what's the what's the probability that of j is rich then um uh, it, it sounds like the sizes know. of the objects coming before j cannot have a size larger than b minus dj because that, that's the, the distance you, you need right and so that event okay so so you're interested in the event that the sum of the sbis before j is at most b minus j and you have this this lower bound in the expected value so um by a sort of bound argument the likelihood of reaching that j is so unlikely so one can then argue that you can truncate the path at that point ignore those curtises and you're interested in doing that because um we, yeah we wanted that constant value for k prime right we want that to be too large or else we have to split into too many little sub paths okay. uh, thank you 